Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today, I want to share something I've been working on lately. I've been using the Redux model from Black Forest Lab to create two workflows for replacing portrait backgrounds. If you ever try changing backgrounds, you know the toughest part is matching the lighting between the subject and the new background. Well, the Redux model does an amazing job of solving this issue. It's a bit like IP adapter, but I know that might sound a little abstract. So let's jump into it and look at some examples. Here's an image with a white background. It could really be any background though. Our goal is to replace this background with one we define using a prompt. To do this, I've developed two workflows, a basic version and an advanced version. Let's take a closer look at what each can do. First up, here's an image generated using the basic workflow. Let's compare it to the original. With Redux, the model doesn't directly replace the background. It uses the original image as a reference, including the face, body, clothing, and background. Because of this reference approach, the lighting between the subject and the background stays pretty consistent. The result is solid and the face consistency is impressive too, thanks to the Redux model. And I didn't use any face replacement tools like Pool ID here. Of course, if you trained LoRa specifically for a face, you can include that in the workflow for even better consistency. But the basic workflow does have its limitations. For instance, if we start with a full body photo, the basic workflow struggles to generate a full body result. It tends to crop out the head or feet. On the other hand, the advanced workflow is much more versatile. It can generate full body images, half body shorts, or even close up portraits. Another issue with the basic workflow is that the results can sometimes feel a bit unnatural. For example, in this image, I pasted the portrait onto the background as a reference for the Redux model. And while the model adjusts the lighting somewhat, the final result still feels off. That's because Redux stays very faithful to the original image. In contrast, the advanced workflow takes a different approach. It only references the subject, while the background is entirely generated from the prompt. This gives a more natural looking result with better lighting harmony. And there's another detail to consider. In a basic workflow, if you zoom in, the face details can be a bit off. This is a common issue with text to image generation, especially when the face occupies a small part of the image. The advanced workflow addresses this by processing the face separately, which preserves more detail and makes it look much closer to the original. Let me show you some side-by-side -side comparisons. On the left, you can see the original reference image, and on the right, the result from the advanced workflow. Notice how the face in the advanced version matches the ambient light of the new background much better. Alright, now that you've seen the results, let's dive into how these workflows work, starting with the basic version. While it's not perfect, the process behind it is definitely worth learning. I'll link the workflow download in the description below. It's free, so feel free to check it out. The first step of the workflow is handled by the initial node group which loads the necessary models and sets up the prompt. From there, the second node group gets to work. It starts by removing the background from the image using the image remove BG node. Once that's done, it generates a contour map of the subject. Using this contour map, the Kenny model from Black Forest Lab steps in to create a new version of the subject and background based on the outline. For this process, I use the quantized version of the Kenny model. Is more lightweight and completely sufficient for this task. Since the person is going to be removed and replaced later, there's no need to use the heavy duty 20 GB version of the model. The Q8 version I'm using here is already more than enough. Honestly, even a smaller Q4 version would get the job done just fine. The next step removes the subject from the previous image, leaving us with just the background. After that, the original subject is pasted back onto this new background. This intermediate image becomes a reference for the Redux model. And that's the basic workflow in action. 
Now let's move on to the advanced workflow, which is where things get more flexible. Start by deactivating the other node groups and running the first one. This step is similar to the basic workflow. We load models, set the prompt, and remove the background. I want to highlight the checkpoint choice here. I went with Pixel Wave because it delivers artistic results and realistic skin textures. However, it's not very compatible with LoRa. If you're planning to use LoRa, for example, for a specific face, I recommend picking a different model, though it's better to use it later in the face replacement stage. The similarity of the final face swap depends a lot on the checkpoint and the face itself. If the face in a training dataset is similar to the original image, the swap will look more accurate. But for faces with very unique features, training a LoRa specifically for that face is your best bet. Next, let's move to the second node group. Starting by uploading the image and running the workflow, the first step here uses the constraint image node, which adjusts the dimension of the original image. After applying these constraints, the height maxes out at 2000 pixels, with the width automatically adjusting to 1333 pixels to maintain the proportions. Once the background is removed, you can preview the isolated subject in the preview bridge image node. The nodes on the right are responsible for isolating the face, which will later serve as a reference for face replacement. Here's what the cropped face looks like. The preview node also displays the reference image for the next node group in the workflow. At this stage, the goal is to preserve the subject's body and clothing as faithfully as possible while introducing a new background. By default, the workflow uses the portrait with the background removed as the reference. Now let's move to the third node group, which generates the new background. Great, now we can see the new background. The content of the background is defined by the prompt we set earlier in the first node group. The size of the image is controlled by the empty laden size picker node. This node offers a variety of preset sizes to choose from. If you need even more customization, you can switch to a different node that lets you manually input specific width and height dimensions. This means that regardless of the size of the original uploaded image, you have complete control over the final image size. This level of flexibility is a significant improvement compared to the more rigid basic workflow. The centerpiece of this workflow is the Redux Advanced node. Think of it as the advanced version of the Apply IP Adapter node. This powerful node allows us to fully customize the type of output we want, whether it's a full body photo, a hard body shot, or even just a headshot. It gives you a lot of control over the final result. Here's how it works. I've uploaded an image along with a mask. The node automatically crops the image based on the mask and uses that cropped section as a reference. You can preview this reference in the image preview node. And as you can see, it's cropped exactly to match the mask. This functionality is very similar to the IP adapter, which also lets you define reference areas using a mask. To enable this feature, make sure to set the mode option to auto crop with mask. This tells the node to focus specifically on the area defined by the mask for generating the output. It's a super handy tool for tailoring your results exactly the way you want. Since I uploaded a full body photo, the workflow initially uses the entire figure as a reference after the background is removed. But here's where things get interesting. You can customize the reference area using the preview bridge image node from the second node group. Just right click on this node to open the mask editor. In the mask editor, you can paint over areas you don't want to include in the reference. For example, I want a full body portrait this time, so I'll mask out the calves and the feet. Once you're done editing, save your changes and run the workflow again. Now if you check the image preview node, you'll see the updated reference area. It's the same preview used in the Redux Advanced node. Sure enough, the output has been cropped into a half-length portrait. That said, the hands in this version didn't turn out quite right, which can sometimes happen with generated outputs. No worries though, let's run it again. And there we go, the hands look much better this time. Another key parameter in the Redux Advanced node is the downsampling factor. Generally, setting it to 1 gives you the strongest reference effect, which is ideal when you want to keep the generated image as close as possible to the original subject. However, if you want to introduce changes to the original image, increasing the downsampling factor can give you more flexibility. For example, for generating this image, I used the reference where the subject was wearing a white t-shirt. But in the prompt, I wrote sports bra. 
And by setting the down sampling factor to 3, I was able to swap the t-shirt for a sports bra. However, this also slightly altered the hairstyle. So keep in mind that higher down sampling can lead to unexpected changes. Once we are satisfied with the base image, the next step is to fix any issues like the hands. Let's open the next node group for that. After fixing the hands, the main composition is complete, and now we move on to processing the face. Because the face occupies such a small portion of the reference image, it might not fully match the original. Additionally, details in the generated faces often have small issues that need to be addressed separately. To handle this, we open the next node group and run the workflow. This step crops out the face, creating a separate image for repainting and face replacement. You can see the cropped face and the repaint area in the preview nodes. The size of the repaint area can be adjusted using the girl parameter in the layer mask mask girl node, which allows for fine tuning. Next, we move to the two node groups below. The pool ID flex model has been updated to the version v0.9.1, so I update it first. Both node groups use the crop face as a reference, but the methods differ. The first group uses the Redux model, while the second uses pool ID. This gives us two slightly different face replacement options to choose from. Finally, we open the last node group. This step is all about integrating the replaced face back into the full image. Since we generated two face options, one with Redux and one with pool ID, we can use the image switching node to select our preferred version. Input 1 corresponds to the face from Redux, and input 2 corresponds to the face from pool ID. After making the selection, we run the workflow, and the new face is seamlessly added back to the image. And that's it! This is one way to use Redux model for portrait editing. The similarity of the face swap can vary depending on the checkpoint used and the original face. If you are aiming for 100% similarity, I recommend checking out the video I made earlier, which dives deeper into that process. I'll link it below for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.